Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Basically, all the good stuff. That was a, my dad wrote a porno reference. Um, anyways, content warnings can be found in the episode description. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Dungeons and Daddies. Though I'm uh, your daddy master as always, and Freddie and Matt will be here as NPCs, the main characters of this episode will actually be played by the stars of literally the funniest podcast on the internet, Hey Riddle Riddle. So we've got Alar Fai, Aaron Keefe, and JPC here. Oh yeah, thank you so much for having us. Hey Riddle Riddle is a podcast where the three of us try and solve riddies and puzzies, and along the way we call for improvised scenes and do all kinds of just classic shenanigans, just your classic 1950s Exhausting shenanigans. shenanigans. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Thank you so much. That's what I'm trying to say. And as we try and do those scenes, JPC derails us. I think I do it about a third of the time. Everyone else gets in there to derail as well. You're a classic podcast penny on the railroad tracks. <laughs> I will say that when we first started Dungeons and Daddies, we were looking at various podcasts, various sort of dynamics. And Anthony brought up, he was like, well, there's only really one podcast I've been listening to. And he turned <laughs> me on to you folks. And most of the time when someone recommends you a podcast, you say, no, thank you. Well, no, you go, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I will. And then you continue <laughs> then to lie for the rest of your relationship sure. together. But I listened to it and I quite enjoyed it. So we look forward to uh, showing up on your end. But tonight... You are playing in our playground, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, oh, God. All the doors in my apartment just locked. How did you do that? <laughs> All my windows exploded. That's a new Alexa feature. I'd love to say that Anthony said something very nice about the podcast and said it was very funny. And then Freddie said Anthony only listens to one podcast. So just, just, to, <laughs> just to point out. Next to Serial yeah. Season 3, it is the funniest <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. Love those odds. Love those odds. No, we're all very happy to be here. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. And just to clarify, I'm the Asian Malone of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, JPC, and Adel, the three of you wake up in a room that is far, far longer than it is wide. It's almost like a train car. And there are big metal cage doors every 30 feet or so separating groups of people from other groups of people. Uh, as you look around, you immediately see each other and you're all strapped into chairs. You have your names on uh, bright orange outfits that also have the crime for which you have been arrested. All three of you have been arrested for some sort of crime. So what do you see when you look at each other? What are your names and what are you in for? I'll start. When you look at me, this is JPC, if you're not familiar with my voice, you're going to be. <laughs> Woof. Yeah, well, there's my trial will be very public. <laughs> For vocal crimes. Yeah, local crimes. I'll be playing Granny Zuko. Granny Zuko is a 74-year-old woman. She has gray hair. She's kind of squat. She has obviously lived a life of labor, not like a, a, an easy life. She's very much a person of the people. Her hair is like tied back tight in a bun and she has little reading glasses on, like kind of like pushed down her nose, like what you would imagine if you thought about a librarian. And her crime says illegal street racing. <laughs> <laughs> this is Adel's voice. My character is Dr. Peter Wingspan. He is a rogue Aracocra. Arakakra? Not sure how sure. to say that. He's basically like a humanoid falcon. He has sort of reddish brown plumage, except at the very top of his head, it's all gone white. He is not an actual doctor. Dr. Peter Wingspan, I have to reiterate this. He's not an actual doctor. He is called Dr. Peter Wingspan because he doctors papers, maps, IDs, you name it. He provides fake documents for anyone who needs that service. He's a bird man, so he's fairly slight. He obviously has avian hollow bones, so he's not very muscular or anything. <laughs> but you can tell he's a bit of a badass because he does have a tattoo. There's some feathers plucked out around his collarbone, and he does have a tattoo that says flight risk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> which everyone loves because he's a bird. Yeah, and that's Dr. Peter Wingspan. Wasn't that one of Jared Leto's Joker tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever disrespect my favorite Joker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Aaron's voice, and I am playing Lime LaCroix, who is a 
sorcerer tiefling. Am I saying that right? Sorcerer, yes. I think it's actually lacroix. Lacroix. Depending You're on. right. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> Lime lacroix. She is just like sort of a loser. Uh, she keeps getting fired from different jobs. Her hair is green. Her skin is green. Her favorite color is green. She has a tattoo that says flight risk. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) And and she's in there for just not taking simple instructions, uh, which is against the law. Fantastic. It's cool that her favorite color is also her skin color, because if I was like... Yeah, it's convenient. My favorite color is white. People would be like, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) Okay, so uh, why doesn't everybody roll me perception? Hell yeah. Granny Zuko rolled an eight. So uh, whatever it is, she ain't having it. The glasses are, by the way, she needs them to see. They're down on her nose for a look. It's not really helping her at all. (laughs) Peter Wingspan rolled a 17 perception. I rolled a 15. Wingspan and LaCroix, you can tell immediately that something is not quite right about this place. The walls are red and wet and glistening. They're moving in a way that your brain can't quite make heads or tails of yet. What do we think that's on the wall? Is that blood or can I eat that? Are those two separate questions? (laughs) No, they're the same. (laughs) You know the difference between jam and blood? Blood doesn't have seeds in it. Well, mine does. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to stop talking about it and just do it. Put the blood where my mouth is. (laughs) It was definitely blood and I loved it. (laughs) You guys, you got to try this blood. Granny Zuko, you can see that next to you is a large metallic orb that is also strapped into a chair just like you. It's an orb that the bottom half of it is covered by an orange jumpsuit, and it just says ball on it, and under crime it just says balling. <laughs> a voice booms from all around you. Sorry, uh, it Anthony, feels like it's coming. Anthony, this ball doesn't have any tattoos, right, around the neck or collarbone? Oh, yeah, no, it has one that says flight risk. <laughs> Motherfuck! <laughs> I thought I was the trendsetter, but I am a sucker. <laughs> yeah, no, back in canon, he's actually the first one who did it, and you saw it, and that's what made you want to that's how you do improv right is you like retcon what somebody else oh, did oh yeah yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you hear a voice booming from all around you simultaneously and uh, the voice is like wake up criminals you are on your way to the meth bay supermax the most brutal and inescapable prison of all time you have two hours until we arrive and once you do the rest of your life sentences shall begin the ball next to you says guys we got to get out of here I've, I've heard a lot about the meth bay prison the supermax is not a good place to be and dr peter wingspan says where is your mouth? <laughs> That's a fucking offensive. Where's your mouth, asshole? <laughs> I guess my beak is my mouth, but uh, I guess my apologies. I just couldn't tell where the voice was coming out of. Well, friend, you're correct. We need, and this is a totally original voice that I created right now. <laughs> Keep reaching for the stars. We do need to get out of here. Do you know of any uh, way to undo these straps? I do, I do, but you're going to have to give me a hit. Knowledge is my, like, my thing. I'm going to do the quick hit of knowledge, and I've had, I have this fucking problem, right? This puzzle that somebody told me once, I don't have the solution. If you could solve it, I feel like that's an even exchange and I'll, I'll let you out. Does that work? Does that make sense? If your problem is drugs, son, then uh, the Lord could help sort <laughs> that out for you. I'm Granny Zuko, a cleric of the Lord. Uh, is there anything that I could do to assist you? Uh, yeah, you could stop proselytizing at me and solve my fucking puzzle. I don't need, I don't need Jesus. You think you don't? We'll solve a riddle. All right, so here's the riddle. You can walk when you have four of me. Any less, don't even try. When you have lots of fun, you're possessing me. Now tell me, what am I? Hmm. Okay, this will take the full two hours. Uh, (laughs) 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 This is a terrible situation. We've painted ourselves into a corner, of course. You can walk when you have four of me. Okay, is it an hour-long wait? (laughs) If if I had a four-hour wait, I'm telling you right now, I would walk right out of there and go to a different Red Lobster. (laughs) I think I know the solution. You can walk when there's four of me. Of course, a walk is a cooking utensil. You take four steps. Of vegetables, watercress, uh, probably some sort of onion, t- tomato, and a second kind of onion. I love combining onion types. Four, four of me. What's the second half of that? Uh, you could walk when you have four of me. Any less, don't even try. When you have lots of fun, you're possessing me. Now tell me, what am I? When you have lots of fun, you're. Well, I will say walk when you have four of me. I'm, uh, of course, an Arakakura, however you say it, and I'm a sort of bird man, and I have talons, not toes, and I do have four talons on each foot. There's sort of three frontward facing claws, and then a sort of backwards thumb claw on my bottom. Uh, so could be 
could be claws. It's crazy that even though I don't know the answer, I know for sure that you're not close. That's it's, it's, it's the weird <laughs> thing about this. Okay, you try not to take that personally, but it seems very pointed at me. Oh, fuck you, game ball. I can't point, I'm a sphere. <laughs> Is it wheels on something? Uh, that feels maybe closer. <laughs> Still not quite it. No, it's it's fine. And real quick, just a non sequitur, completely out of nowhere, I would like to say the three following words. The wind, egg, and an echo. <laughs> 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 just like to get those three out of there. 99% <laughs> of the time, that's the right answer. Um, 11. No, it's not. It's none of those. It's not an 11? Oh, man. Oh, okay. Well, Anthony, we are in cages, right? Like in these boxes. Directly across from us... Do we see anyone else in a cage or are we pretty much alone here? In this particular antechamber, you are alone except for you in the sphere. But on the other side of a cage, you can see there are three really fleshy meat men looking. Kind of like, they're like humanoid piles of meat wearing blue coats with little tin stars on them. Three of them are walking around in the next room surrounding another smaller cell that's only big enough for one person. And the person inside, if you can even call it that, it's like a big transparent jumpsuit. And inside the jumpsuit is a bunch of like green cloudy smoke that's just undulating within it. It feels like there's actually nothing in the suit other than the smoke, but it's taking this like humanoid form because of the container that it's in. yoo uh, Excuse me. Um, oh my God. That thing is so handsome. I'm going to blow it. She's trying to fuck smoke again. <laughs> I'm going to blow it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to? Try, I'm yes. going to succeed. The instructions that <laughs> LaCroix didn't follow were, please don't fuck the smoke, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Excuse me, smoke? Yes. Um. What do you want? I was wondering if you could help us solve a riddle over here. Or if you could go through those bars uh, and then maybe take me to a bar. If you must... What does the sphere wish to know? And sorry, out of character, is that Werner Herzog? I just need to know. It's a mix. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Incidentally, I do have a killer Werner Herzog. It's very Werner adjacent. Never listen to these tapes. Let me just get into it. <laughs> Never listen to these tapes. Never listen to this podcast. You know, Anthony, I'm going to roll insight to see if I can get anything on that riddle. Why not? All right. And my D20 comes up. 17. Okay. So the third line, when you have lots of fun, you're possessing me. You could take the phrase, you're possessing me, and rephrase it to I'm having a blank blast ball so when you say ball the sphere next to you just starts to like rotate and it goes oh that was it that was it that was it that was it oh oh oh, I feel so good oh thank you so much thank you so much okay so in order to get I want to kick it (laughs) can I kick it yeah so are you rapping (laughs) (laughs) yeah sorry guys I just yes you can I need to (laughs) (laughs) yeah so he basically he just gets out of his constraints and then just like headbutts well I guess ball butts each of the like little buckles on you and and lets you out so if you want to kick him just give me a, an unarmed combat roll. Aaron, I gotta say, always a great idea to kick a giant metal ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 13. 13. Okay, so with 13, you hit it and uh, you break your big toe immediately. So you take a d4 <laughs> of damage and it goes like, oh, what was that for? Um, you killed my buzz. Three. <laughs> okay, so you, yeah, you take three damage directly to your big toe. I have no impulse control. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. There are windows on the left and right of this room, but they are closed. And now that you're up and you can turn your head around, you can see that behind you is a very large hatch that also appears to be closed. And directly in front of you, through that gate for which you saw the weird disease thing in that human-shaped bag, there's a door with a little lock in it. And on the other side is a guard who is facing away from you, and you can see a cartoonishly large ring dangling from his cartoonishly large belt. Okay, I see what's going on here. There's a hatch in the room with us. There's a smoke monster. All right, Anthony, we get it. <laughs> this is all Breaking Bad references. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Can we see the windows or are they covered in that substance? You can see the windows. Like, if you want to, you can just go and, like, open them. I gotcha. I do just that. I unshackle myself from the chair and I go over and uh, open up the windows and peek my head out. As the good doctor begins to uh, do that, Granny Zuko is just tidying up the room a little bit. <laughs> So when you open up the window, all you see is clouds and sky. And as your vision adjusts to what you're looking at, you can see the peaks of mountaintops and you begin to realize that whatever you're in is flying. Well, I can get out of here whenever I want, but. uh... (laughs) I didn't think of that shit. Um, I don't know. Are you strong enough to carry us or fly us out of here? Uh, No, I'm I'm very, very weak. I have avian bones. We just call them bones. But for, for your kind, I'll call them avian. And uh, you know what? I'm going to stick around just because you two have piqued my interest. Well, I certainly appreciate the company. So the adjoining room, the guard turns around and sees you all there. And is like, hey, get back in your chairs. Don't be dicks. Come on. Don't make me come in there. Great. Dr. Peter Wingspan whispers to Granny Zuko and says, act, act like you know him. 
Act like you went to school together or something. Jeremy! <laughs> oh, it's my big, strong Jeremy! <laughs> Pretty bold to guess a name, but okay. <laughs> yeah, that's very bold. Give me a deception check with disadvantage. <laughs> All right. I was going to say, like, big guy or something. I'll gladly roll this deception at uh, disadvantage. I rolled, a, uh, I rolled a five both times. Okay. You have a one in eight trillion chance of getting his name right. <laughs> he goes, spelled how? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, spelled. Spelled H U G. Come on in here, Jeremy. Oh, my big strong boy. That's the best fucking answer. She goes to hug him. <laughs> so, so as you come to hug him, he like shakes his head, like, oh, I don't know about this. And then as that happens, you see behind him that the weird green smoke thing inside of the human shaped suit. It takes a little like sliver of metal and it stabs into where the neck would be if it were an actual person and like opens up the bag that's containing its essence. And then the smoke just escapes from it and goes into one of the guards next to it. And then another part of the smoke goes into another guard and another part of the smoke goes into the other guard. Before you stands a number of human <laughs> guards whose sole yes. purpose <laughs> is to serve a faceless, heartless machine which imprisons men. I push one against the goopy substance of the walls. The other I grab from behind and whisper in his ear. Today is not your lucky day, motherfucker. Holy shit, this is good. I turn to you three in the back and I say, you fools. Lime LaCroix is suddenly eating popcorn all of a sudden, <laughs> staring at him. I require your assistance to overpower these human guards. One of the guards, the one that was talking to you, Jeremy, the key on his back, he's been pushed up against the wall by another one of the guards, and you can reach it if you want to. Lime LaCroix will limp over there and try to reach it. So because he's restrained, basically, you just automatically grab it. And yeah, if you want to open up the gate, you can do so easily. But at that point, you will have access to the three other guards and the virus thing. Mm. I have pinned them to the walls, open the windows, and throw these men to their doom. I'm going to open it. Yes. Okay, great. So the only guard that seems to be remaining, and I said there were three guards, weren't they? I lied. There were four guards. Three of them seem to be possessed by this weird virus creature thing and seems to be able to control them to some limited extent. The only one that is completely under his own volition is Jeremy. So this door opens, you now have access to all of them. What do you want to do? So we don't have any weapons on us either, correct? We're unarmed? Correct. Do the guards have weapons? Yeah, the guards all have swords, like little shitty swords. Actually, roll me perception. Sure. Little shitty swords? You mean knives? <laughs> <laughs> little shitty swords. My perception is a non-natural 20. Ooh, okay. So you can tell that those swords are made of bone. And with a non-natural 20, even though it's not natural, it's high enough for you to realize that a lot of the scaffold of this room, what you assumed was just the stuff that's keeping the room up, that also seems to be made of bone. Oh, I've got chills and they're multiplying. Oh shit, he's losing control. I was wondering when that was going to happen. <laughs> you should act like you know them too. Know the boats? <laughs> I <laughs> hate the boats! <laughs> hmm. So if uh, this guard is still restrained, mm -hmm. can I go for his bone sword? Like try to take the bone sword away from him? Yeah, give me a sleight of hand with advantage. Oh boy. Uh, that is a 18. Okay, so yeah, you easily take the bone sword away from him as he is pinned. I grab the bone sword, and then I, I kind of have a freakout moment, because uh, old Granny Suko is not one for violence. Uh, she's a, a cleric of the Lord. And I hand the sword over to uh, Lime LaCroix. Uh, you take this. Yes, yes. And then she uses it to take some butter off and <laughs> put some more butter on her popcorn. <laughs> you butter your popcorn in pats of butter? Yeah, one pop. <laughs> Corn at a time. That's what you're in prison for, then. That's the crime. <laughs> oh, you're a sociopath. For clarification, Freddie, we are from Chicago, which is in the Midwest, which is where you put butter on everything. Oh, <laughs> have you ever had deep popcorn? Oh, deep popcorn, the best. <laughs> the best way that I can describe it is, I think like in like uh, most places, you have pancakes with the little tiny thing of butter on top of the pancakes. We just reverse it. <laughs> we do a tiny little pancake <laughs> on a big thing of butter. <laughs> that sounds so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as I understand it, Chicago is a place where you get to have one barbecue on the one day of the year that it's not either insanely hot and humid or snowing and it's 10 foot deep out there. Oh, Chicago sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so this guard is restrained. He's weaponless. 
take the sword and end the lives of these vermin. Well, uh, now hold on now. First of all, let's just check in with Jeremy. Now, Jeremy, we <laughs> obviously have you kind of in a compromising position. If you reform and you devote your life to the Lord and you renounce your evil ways of being uh, uh, some sort of prison guard, uh, we will uh, let you live and come along with us. Oh, but, uh, I, 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 love, I love the Lord. Oh, I'm so psyched about the Lord. My fav- he's my favorite. No, Smoke Monster, uh, Jeremy is now uh, protected by the Lord, and so it's, uh, <laughs> we, it's, our, it's our duty to let these men go, and they're going to assist us and help us. I feel like I'm going to like continue to fuck with these other guards and try and possess them and push the ones like that I can like out the window. You have the power to basically whatever you want to just kill somebody with your virus power, so if you want to, you could just make them choke to death on their own blood. Okay, I'm going to infect one of them to open up the window and throw himself out. Okay, give me a d20 roll. That's a five, Anthony. So he gets up to the window and he, and he like, like holds his hands out. Yeah, he holds his hands out and grabs onto the window and is about to push himself out, but then all of a sudden his arms, like he like locks his elbows up and is like, and is like fighting with himself to make sure he doesn't get thrown out of the window. All right, do it. And this god or convert him as well. I don't care. Mercy is for the weak. This is not the first time I've had a crush on a virus <laughs> and I am falling <laughs> Horde. Uh-oh. And Dr. Peter Wingspan <laughs> attempts to intervene to talk to the guard who was about to jump out the window but stopped himself, and I'm going to try and verbally convince him to jump out the window. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you say? Hey, friend, uh, you know it must be hard working as a guard in this. That uh, should do it. That should do it. Hear <laughs> 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 <Cheer> me? Cheer <laughs> me? Roll, roll persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a natural Yay. 20. Natural 20. Oh. Natural 20. <laughs> no. So the natural 20, both he and the other two guards are like, well, that's enough of that. And they just jump out of the nearest window. That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. So yeah, the only ones left is Jeremy. Before they throw themselves out the windows, you see the green virus mist leave their bodies and sort of coalesce back into one large cloud. Yes, I'm still here. Shit. <laughs> Didn't think I would go that easy, huh? What's your name, Mr. Virus? They call me... Plague. Ooh. For I am a pestilence that spreads across the land, bringing death and despair to all that I encounter. Now, I don't want to be rude, but uh, just for, for clarity's sake, are we going to get sick by being in uh, your presence? I can assure you, no. I have the ability to infect any who I choose, and you guys seem pretty chill. And are those assurances just verbal, or do you have any sort of documentation? I show both of my hands, uh-huh. and none uh-huh. of my fingers are crossed. That does it for me, man. I'm his wife. Can I offer you a hard candy? Oh, yes. It's some manner of Werther's. It's a uh, Dwarther's. Uh, <laughs> it's Dwarven Warther's. It's cheaper, but it's still good. And also, Plague, she's been asking everybody this. Uh, is it your birthday? <laughs> If so, she's got five gold coins for you. I do. I have a five gold coins for whoever's birthday it is. <laughs> Jeremy, I know your birthday, so don't try to fool me. J- Jeremy's like, it's my birthday. It's definitely my birthday. No, no, no. <laughs> oh. But in a sense, like, I'm, I'm newborn, right? Because of the Christ thing. So, like, it's kind of my give birthday. Give him $5. I'll give five him $5 coin. because he's trying to con the church. And that's <laughs> worth $5 <laughs> to anyone. Lime a uh, hand's plague a little piece of paper uh, like written in a gel pen that says will you be my boyfriend and then a box for yes and then no. <laughs> it comes back checked yes. <gasps> <laughs> and you can't tell but the formless mist appears to wink. Ooh! <laughs> you can see into the next room there's a very large person sized black box with completely opaque sides. You can't see into it at all. There is a very large guard standing next to that box in the next room. There are three trap doors in that room and in that room there's also a trap translucent cage that glows with a blue energy and inside of it is a rabbit made out of dust. This door that's leading to the next area, is it locked and can we use Jeremy's keys on that door? The answer is yes to both. Okay. Granny Zuko um, says, uh, now everyone, let's uh, make our way through the next section. I'm uh, I'm particularly interested in that uh, black box and that tiny little rabbit. And she uh, unlocks the door. She gets it wrong a couple of times. I've done this before. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, no. Um, sometimes my nephew has to help me unlock this. I have to call him, but he's not here. So I'll, I can do it. I can do it. Okay. So I've tried this one. <laughs> Granny, while you're doing that, tell us about the war. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I've been around for a lot of that. Here we go, unlocked. 
Okay, so as you enter the next room, you can see there's a very subtle like seam running along the middle of one of the faces of this big old black box. And the very large guard that is standing in front of it turns to look at you guys and goes like, Bleh. and then just goes back to sort of crossing his arms and just sort of standing there like a sentinel. And again, there are three trapdoors in front of you and the rabbit made of dust in the, uh, the cell in, at the back of the room can now see you. The dust bunny, if mm-hmm. you will. The moment they come in, I'm not looking at them, but I start thumping my foot. <laughs> Very cute, kind of like Bambi style. I'm just thumping my foot. Pretty excited. Now, I do have to intervene. JPC, hmm. do you see what's going on here? Because I'm noticing a few little hints that I'm picking up on, and I'm curious if you see what's going on here. If you, JPC, the human being behind the character, <laughs> oh yeah, you realize we're playing Con Air. <laughs> Put the bunny in the box. We have a virus. We have a bunny. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That'll be my attempt at a uh, Malkovich impression that got morphed into Herzog, but we'll just keep going. We'll just keep moving on that. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it too hard. This is a dream come true for JPC. It's not even. It's not even. A, it's a diamond uh, bunny, diamond dog. Yeah. Okay. I just can't wait to see when Cole Meany shows up. <laughs> my favorite thing about that movie, watching it again recently, is how they're like, "Here's a guy who's like a horrible rapist. Here's a guy who murdered a bunch of people, and here's Ving Rhames. He's black and he doesn't like the NRA." And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for that guy. Hey, I don't know. It's pretty accurate. Your indictment of our penal system. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's like, yeah. sure. here's the worst of the worst criminals and 90% of people who had a little bit of weed. And that's. <laughs> Dr. Peter Wingspan goes over to the trap doors to see if he can kind of peek within or see if there's any warning signs in terms of if there's an actual trap connected to the trap door. Yeah. So as you get close to the trap doors, you can hear a bubbling from beneath them, not from any particular one, but you can hear some bubbling. And the big guard who sees you coming up to the trap doors goes like, oh, uh, your, uh, your stuff is under, is under one of those. But not the other two. The other two will hurt you. And sorry, friend, when you say stuff, do you mean... Your equipment, whatever you had when they arrested you, the stuff that they'll give back to you if they ever let you out of prison, which they won't. But, like, if you want to get your weapons and stuff back, it's it's under one of those. Oh, great. This has been very helpful, guard. <laughs> I only have one job, is to keep people out of the black box. That's all I'm going to do. I don't give a shit if you kill everybody else on this friggin' thing. Do you care what happens to the bunny? Yeah, what now? What's going on with the bunny? Are you protecting the bunny? Because its eyes are really big and I really want to eat it. No, I don't give a shit about the bunny. You know, I'm right here. You can oh, talk to boy. me. Yeah. And I turn around. That bunny talks. I cast sleep on the guard. Okay, uh, does it work? It fizzles out. Oh, uh, well, that wasn't as impressive as I was hoping it would be. Hi. Specifically, when you try to cast it, you can see the blue shimmer on the cell surrounding you. It gets like really bright for a second and then just poof, like smoke comes out of your hand. Well, we'll have to solve that. Bunny, full disclosure, I want to eat you. You're too big. I got no <laughs> impulse control. I kicked a ball earlier, broke my toe. It's bleeding. And I want to eat you. I want to eat you too. Ugh. I want to eat all of you. Oh, yeah. Pinball's dead now, by the way. Pinball is back there, and he bled to death. He's dead now. He's not He's not in the story anymore. <laughs> Did I kill him? You killed him. There's a slight incline. I can't go up it. Come on. Come on. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Bunny, I see that you uh, tried to cast a spell, which uh, uh, fizzled inside of your cell. But I didn't want it to work. It would have worked just fine. Oh, yeah. I've... It worked fine. You don't know what it did. It worked fine. Classic excuse. I've been there, yeah. I've done excuses before as well. <laughs> uh, you know, my name's Granny Zuko. I'm a nice, kindly uh, person, and I will uh, absolutely let you out of the cell because I believe that no one deserves to be uh, in prison. Uh, uh, but uh, do you uh, promise that you'll uh, play nice with our unlikely gang here? Absolutely. I'd love to get out of the cell. I'm Thumper, by the way. Bunny just said he wanted to eat me too, though. <laughs> well, I mean, that was in response to you saying you want... I'm just... I thought that's a greeting of your people. That's all. Oh, okay. I would love to eat all of you. Hi, I'm Thumper. I'd like to eat you and you and you. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Zuko unlocks the cell, assuming the keys work, that Thumper is uh, kept in and then lets Thumper out. The moment Thumper comes out, I want to stomp on the guard's head. Okay, roll an attack. A 14. You try to stomp on his head. He dodges out of the way far more dexterously than you'd expect from a guy as big as him. And he just decks you right in your dust bunny mouth. Ow. Guys, get him. He's a guard. What are you doing? Well, I just watched him beat the shit out of you, so I'm (laughs) certainly not going to get him. So Lime LaCroix, I think she's going to try to cast a spell. To try to... Uh, Don't do sleep. Just like uh, distract the guard or knock him out or something. Okay. What spell would you use? I'll do charm person. Okay. And Aaron, you also have to say one line, any line from the TV show Charmed. Uh, uh, genie? Is it genies or wi- what is Charmed? <laughs> Which They're one witches. was Charmed? <laughs> witches? 
Wh- witches. That's it. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sure they say witches on it. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> From the Emmy Award winning episode. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, famously, on the last day of the set, they said, which one is charmed? So you nailed it immediately. <laughs> 12 seasons and we never pluralized it. We only ever said witch. So he failed his save. So immediately he looks at you and starts blushing. Hi, I'm Lyme McCry. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. Hey, how about we, this is a crazy idea and so weird. Like, totally weird, but, like, so fun. Can you, like, let us in? Oh, I don't know about that. So Charm makes you a friendly acquaintance of his, I believe. So he's like, I, 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 like I, you guys seem pretty nice, but I don't know. It's it's like my one job. You don't you don't want to go in there anyway. There's nothing good in there, I promise. Like, the stuff you really want is under one of those three trapdoors. I have a whole little puzzle about that if you want. <laughs> if not, no big deal. You can also just keep going up to the front of the vehicle if you want. Just leave me be. Well, tell me the puzzle, stud. Okay, okay. So Everyone's just aggressively just hitting on this guy now. <laughs> <laughs> he says, okay. So two of those doors lead to your stuff, and one of them leads to something bad. So you can point at one of those three doors, and you can ask me a single yes or no question about anything. If the door that you're pointing to is the one that leads to your stuff, then I tell the truth no matter what the question is. If the door that you're pointing to leads to something bad, then I'm going to either lie or tell the truth randomly to whatever your question is. So with all that stuff, you should be able to figure out which one has your stuff behind it. This is a blast. Hey guys, I've been in this room the whole time and I couldn't help but uh, see how poorly you did on that previous puzzle. I could just tell you which one it's under. No, 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 where's no, the no. fun in that? No, no, no we, have have to to earn it. we have to earn it. Okay, it's the left one, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to point at the first door and say, is there stuff under there? You point at one of the doors and ask if it's behind that door that you're pointing at? One, two, or three? One. So he goes, are you sure that's the question you want to ask? Are you sure, Zs? Because you only get the one. Wait, wait, wait. The group of us only gets one question, or we each only get one question? No, don't answer that, because, Granny, <laughs> that's a question. It wasn't yes or no. It's okay. It's no. The group of you gets one yes or no question. Okay, okay. Hmm. Which of us would you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, only one of you charmed me, so <laughs> I feel like... It's got to be that one, right? Good enough for me. Uh, out the window I go. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. Sweet night sky kissing on my feathers. <laughs> <laughs> no, let this play out. Just like a quick little interim of the eagle flying through the night sky. I'm not an eagle. I'm a falcon. And uh, specifically, I'm a falcon artist. Oh. So. That's nice. good. Um, okay, so what are the... Th- how? Okay. Uh, so oh. now, now I'd, I'd just like to throw this out because this is a very complicated situation. Um, the, the, obviously, two of these doors uh, will lead to our stuff and one of them will lead to something very bad. Now, as, as I mentioned, I am a, a cleric of the Lord. I do have a spell called Zone of Truth. Uh, and if we cast the spell, on uh, this sentinel, the sentinel will not be able to lie to us. Uh, it seems like a, how do I want to put this? A and d esque workaround to solving this puzzle. Uh, if anyone wants to use the shortcut, uh, I'll just be over here with the shortcut. Well, Granny, I'd argue that we have a riddle podcast and we will be humiliating ourselves <laughs> if we don't uh, participate in the puzzle. Yes. Uh, Clint Mac. I mean, uh, Granny, I would argue with you that it's not worth our time to use Zone of Truth. We should try and solve the riddle. All right, all right. I mean, and, and, and just to be clear, the bunny also did say it's the one on the left. But <laughs> but the bunny could be lying. We could put the bunny in the Zone of Truth, too. It's a big Zone of Truth. I just want to, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out. Here's a mini riddle. If there's three doors and he says the one on the left, that could be either of two doors. Oh, that's true, yes. Oh, it's about perspective. Yeah. Um. So, friend, you said we can point at any door and ask you a question. And if it's our stuff, you have to tell the truth. And if it's not our stuff, you can lie. Is that Was that the situation? Or tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth or lie randomly if it's the one bad door. But if it's the true door, whatever your question is, I'll tell the truth. And remember, your question doesn't have to be, is it behind the door I'm pointing at? The question could be anything. So I believe the what, what we do is we point at uh, one door. The middle one? Well, it, it doesn't matter which. We point at one door. And ask if the other two doors have the dangerous thing in them. Wait, is that how that works? Hold on. I should have watched Labyrinth. It's very close. I don't it's think you so want to close. do both of the other ones. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's very close. Can we roll to remember the answer? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll uh, Insight. 
and I'll give you a more specific hint. Natural one. Oh, I rolled a natural 20. From Prince okay. to Popper. So that cancels itself out, so it's like you didn't roll at all. Those cancels it out. So, uh, Aaron, you got to roll for us and uh, hope that you get our insight. 16. Hell yeah. So with the 16, you realize that you basically got it. The only minor difference to the answer is you point at one door and you ask about one other door. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Let's do that. And, and the bunny said left. So let's point at the left door and then ask if the door in the middle is the door that has our stuff. Okay. So he says, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. What, what do we do mm-hmm. now? Is the door. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Birdfeathers, go ahead and uh, uh, pop open that middle door. That's the one we want. Okay. Uh, I, I trust you. Let's go ahead and mm-hmm. crack this baby open. And Dr. Peter Wiegenspan grasps the middle door with his talons and tries to open it. Hey. I'm not dating anyone or married, but go up to the most beautiful woman you see. Tell her I loved her. Why is he talking to the smoke man of the buddy? <laughs> oh, because they're two new friends. <laughs> oh, okay. And we're just here, I guess. Your old friend. <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to open the middle door, right? Yes. Okay, so yes, your stuff is down there. The moment they open the middle door, the bunny goes, wrong door. <laughs> and I'm going to attack. <laughs> okay. I'm going to attack with my claws. Which of the three will you attack? The bird who was seeming to eye me because I look like a rabbit, I'm assuming, is what that was. I love that I've said my name 42 times. Times, and every person's I like, oh, the fucking it. bird guy. Dr. Peter <laughs> Wingspan. Ooh, ooh, I got Wingspan. it. Thank you. Thank you. Freddie's got it. Fucking teacher's pet. Feathers McGee. What? We're all saying the same thing. <laughs> Feathers McGee. A 13. My AC is 14, ooh. so no thanks. Uh, oh, I tripped. I tripped. That's okay. I'll help you up. <laughs> it's fine. Brush yourself off. <laughs> I'm a cleric if you need any healing. I know that uh, the I punched you in the head. So. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, no, it's okay. Oh, it was the right door, it looked like. I said wrong door, but it was clearly that you picked the right door. Good door. <laughs> well, hold on. Right is a homonym. Which right do you mean, friend? I meant you picked the middle door, right? You're still playing that game. <laughs> it feels like the phantom toll booth for some reason. You're dealing with homonyms, my man. <laughs> ah. Well, I think you should go get your stuff, and I'll just stay up here. Homonyms, I haven't prepared a service, uh, but uh, (laughs) let's just launch into it. So, uh, the reading from Corinthian can kind of mean a lot of things, I guess. Uh, You know, but it's more about respecting our neighbors and always helping a bunny when they fall against a bird. Fantastic. So, uh, y'all get your stuff. The door to the next room, the wall there is completely opaque. You can't see what's in there until you go in. And the person with the box is still here, correct? Yep, he's still there. Uh, sir, just so I might ask, and you, your name doesn't happen to be Jeremy, is it? How did you know? It's just, I have a knack for these things. <laughs> the box that you're protecting, no one is allowed into it, is that right? Correct. Are we allowed to put anything inside of the box? No. So we can't put the bunny back in the box? Well, there's a separate box. There's a separate box? There's the box that he came out of and then there's the black box I'm guarding. Do you want us to put the bunny back in the box? I mean, considering he just tried to kill you, it might have been the- I cast sleep this time, which I'm assuming I can because I'm no longer in the thing. Yeah. Okay, I cast sleep. He saves. And then immediately steps back to life. He goes, it's not going to be that easy, buddy. I'm going to step in and assist. <laughs> Fuck you. And try and infect and possess said guard. Okay. If I were to define irony, it'd be a bunch of idiots on a plane and a bunny can't <laughs> make a single goddamn roll. 17. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, you've definitely infected him. I'm going to stagger him away from the door. He's fighting as hard as he can, but his roll was so bad that you pretty much easily walk him away from the door. And I kind of puppeteer his mouth with, you know, my molecular powers. And I say, open the door. Does it need a key? Uh, no. Oh, well, don't mind if I do. As you put your <laughs> hand on the door to the black box, you can feel this, like, rhythmic thumping. Well, people are having sex in there. Best to let it alone. It's a party. <laughs> <laughs> As you push it all the way open, you see that inside of this thing is a massive red beating heart and is connected to the roof and the floor beneath you and seems to be pumping blood all throughout whatever the hell this thing that you're inside of is. I knew it was blood because it tasted like blood when I ate it. Lime, I I don't mean to put you in this predicament, but so far you've charmed two of the people on board. Do you want to try and win over this heart? I don't know. It looks a little broken. (laughs) Girl, you can fix him. (laughs) Girl, you got this. Do we know if it's good or bad? If the heart is good or bad? Yeah. I can cast Detect Evil to see if this heart is uh, good or bad. Ooh, Go for it. Detect Evil and Good. It's a first level spell. I think it goes in a 30 foot radius as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I cast that. You don't just cast in the heart. You feel the answer to that question from entirely around you. And you you realize through casting that. Oh, yeah. Let's go down the list. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I guess you can tell on everybody. (laughs) Yeah, that's everybody. You can tell that the guards and the heart and the creature to which the heart belongs 
are lawful good, but good is in quotation marks. Uh, good meaning like <laughs> sarcastically good. Yeah, sarcastically good, or Here's like a donation <laughs> for the poor. <laughs> you know how like when somebody says they're pro law and order, what that actually means? Sure, they're like yeah. that kind of good. Uh. I describe myself to people as a good golfer, but uh, I haven't played in forty years. <laughs> So you can tell that the heart and the building to which the heart is supplying blood, this entire vessel that you're in is a creature, and this is that creature's heart, and that it is way morally black and white on what it believes to be good. You guys, let's go find the butt. <laughs> if there's a heart, there's got to be a butt. Can we go find the butt? Please, can we find the butt? You know what they say? <laughs> the butt wants what it wants. <laughs> what about everyone else that I'm with? Uh, Thumper and Plague. Thumper is the strongest sense of chaotic evil you've ever felt, <laughs> like an emphasis on chaotic. And plague is neutral evil. Sarcastic evil. Yeah. <laughs> is there a way for Granny to check her own heart to see if the Lord has entered it? Ooh, that's a deep insight roll, I would assume. Yeah, I feel like you roll insight, <laughs> and if you roll well, then you'll know the truth. Okay, and I, it's, it's worth it for me. I rolled a one. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done a shred of introspection, and I never will. <laughs> <laughs> I gather as sneakily as possible... Dr. Wingspan and Lime LaCroix uh, together. Just so you know. Uh, I lean in. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, you, How's the team doing? You come in here too, Thumper. Uh, Thumper's evil. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever creature we're inside, that's its heart. And you two seem like you're pretty on the level, but uh, these other two, uh, they might be a kind of uh, evil. While they're having their little powwow, Plague is going to try and control the guard to uh, draw his bone sword and stab the heart of the dragon. Oh, Okay, uh, give me a roll. Come on, give me something. Ah, 12. That's not going to be enough. He puts his hand on the bone sword, but then like stops and grabs it with his other hand. And kind of, he's like Dr. Strangelove trying to stop himself from Heiling Hitler. And uh, he's just frozen in that pose like, no, the heart, it will we'll all go down if the heart is pierced. Also keep him quiet so that no one will notice this sneaky thing I'm doing. <laughs> all right, so he just makes no noise as he just... Argh! is just pushing to keep the sword back in it. You just hear nondescript grunting from the corner. Now, I trust you two. Uh, it seems like we're all on the level. Uh, what do you think that we should do? Well, well one, I just want to say real quick, and I've known this the whole time, we're inside a dragon. Yeah, obviously, I just want to say that. Uh, dragon with sure, windows. Yeah. Uh, Adel, you get inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just had an idea for a book. Anyway, <laughs> I just want to say that if we stab this heart, squawk, 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 if we stab this heart, then we're going to go plummeting down to the earth. When I say we, I mean, uh, of course, uh, the two of you, not me. Of course, I have wings and I'm a falcon. I can Right away, I say that we uh, see if we can get close enough to the head of this dragon that it can uh, hear us from inside of its uh, own head, and we can talk to it to see uh, what to uh, do or what it wants. Uh, well, here's the thing. We all broke the law, right? Yes. What did you do, uh, McFeathers? McFeathers? He is not answering to McFeathers. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, didn't even, I truly didn't realize you were talking to me. Uh, what did I do to get uh, incarcerated? Mm -hmm. Well, I forged a birth certificate. Uh, there was... And Granny... Oh, hold on, let me... <laughs> you were drag more. racing? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> let me be a little more specific. Squawk, squawk. Uh, there was a uh, troll who was born on uh, June 15th, uh, 19,000, and I decided to change it to June 21st, 19,001, just so he could be a, a little bit younger in the eyes of his beau. Hmm. Doesn't seem like totally worth it. I was sure that was going for fantasy Kenya. I was certain that's where that was going. <laughs> I'm a truther, you see, a bird truther. <laughs> <laughs> And you realize that this dragon has chemtrails, right? <laughs> uh, the secret chemtrail check in the back. Do we want to risk going up there? Because it feels like we're criminals. Well, hold on. What? And we're just going to get the like law landing on top of our heads if we go all the way up there. It's very convenient that uh, we never heard what you're in for. Squack. Me? Yeah, yeah, squack, squack. Oh, I just can't follow any simple instructions. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lime LaCroix, and I make a point of saying her full name, Lime LaCroix. Okay, well... That, that seems a little sarcastic. Well, I also, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. All I'm saying is if we stab it in the heart right now, it would make for a really beautiful poem later. Look, look. Stabbing someone from the heart from the inside, beautiful. If we stab it in the heart from the inside, we'll all plummet out of the sky. And, well, our good friend uh, Dr. Feathersby over here can certainly uh, take that <laughs> plummet. The rest of us, uh, me being a woman of a certain age, uh, would Probably fair, not so well. So you like me enough to take my voice, but not remember my name? Fuck you. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll shut this door. Here we go. The, the door is now oh, shut. Oh, I'm right there, though, aren't I? Yes, both of the evil NPCs are right by the door. So as you shut the door, what do you two ding dongs do? I try to attack the heart. Okay, I'll let Matt go first, but I think I'm going to try and throw the guy in so that he's in there with the heart and 
you know, go for another stab. Okay. Give me a D20 roll, Matt. You bastards didn't even say hello to me. You didn't even ask what I'm in here for. What are you in here for? <laughs> now that you ask. Um, I ate a bunch of goblins. That's about it. <laughs> but one goblin I wore his head and crossed three kingdoms. Fucking weird. As a hat. Whoa. I messed that quote up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm rolling. That's got to smell awful. A natural one. <laughs> Okay. We are not getting any. All right. And then I'm going to go for mine. <laughs> Fucking eight. I hug the heart and I start crying as I realize all my life has been for nothing. Yeah. So you two chose just sort of pretty much stay where you are. <laughs> God. Having accomplished nothing. All right, boys. Uh, if you're done standing around here, by the way, this place is a mess. Uh, you could have at least spruced up a little bit while we were having our little discussion. Uh, we should probably uh, advance a little further on into this beast and uh, try to find the brain. Here we go. Come on, Larry Bird. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, yes, I grab one of uh, Thumper's paws and uh, one of Plague's like smoke hands and like try to like lead them along with us. <laughs> Ooh, good luck. <laughs> the moment he grabs my paws, I look up at this old lady showing me the first moment of kindness I felt in my entire life. <laughs> and I just follow. Great. Would you like a dwarfers? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that is, but. Yeah, I think I do. All right. Well, no one knows what they are. It's a dwarven secret recipe. I'm sorry, team. We have to take a quick break so I can write a children's book about the two of you. What a sweet friendship. <laughs> <laughs> An unlikely one. That's beautiful. Is it dwarvers like a uh, Wervens original? I would never have a Wervens original. <laughs> I, you take a buttload of acid damage as soon as you get a Wervens original. Do you have any nips? Those are the other caramel hard candies that really exist. <laughs> I have nips, Fokker. Can you milk me? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, yes. All right, we got to start the recording. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Peter jumps out the window. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> the next room, you can see two... This is going to be a weird fucking pull, but the lobby to the Men in Black building, mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. that thing where it's like this really, really big ass fucking room. What an obscure movie you referenced. <laughs> I know. I literally just How like- How could anybody possibly remember that room? It just occurred to me. It's like a really good shot. I don't know. But uh, you see these two massive bags of what seem to be air that get really, really small and then get really, really big. And there's a big hole in the top of the room that air rushes into and then out of. And then the center of the room. Well, it looks like we're in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> in the center of the room, there is a sword. And when all the air rushes out of the room, it is just a normal ass sword. Once the air rushes in, it catches fire and becomes a flaming sword again. And on the other side of the room is just a door. And you can already just from being close to it, smell something that kind of smells like bad breath when the air is in the room is coming from that other door. So you can feel like you're nearing the front of the dragon. Anthony, with the doors in the windows, is it like the viscera and organ meat has been made into a door or is it like a wooden or metal door has been sort of screwed in they've been like screwed in okay. it's like those cows who have those like fistulated like things on them they've basically been like manufactured and put inside yeah i didn't know three of those words cow <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they're human made manufactured so presumably this dragon either willingly or unwillingly was uh made into a prison bus essentially so it's like okay. the uh it's like the cat bus in um my neighbor Totoro. Totoro. yeah it's exactly that had Totoro. some aftermarket mods unrelated granny doctor this is my dream kitchen. This is insane <laughs> that I'm seeing this. This is absolutely my dream kitchen. Try to take a mental note so when we get home, you can help me, okay? Uh, help you what? Help you find, like, millions of dollars? Look at the square footage in this place. Oh, come on. I don't mean the size. I just mean the ambiance and the vibe. Oh, okay. Yeah, the so doctor gets it. He'll help me. Yeah, what is this, a uh, Nicole Kidman HBO TV series? Come on. Nobody can afford this kitchen. It's a Nancy Myers kitchen. I'd like to argue that Nicole Kidman could. <laughs> <laughs> when I see Nicole Kidman in that kitchen, I think, yeah, that's her kitchen. Checks out. When you say the air rushes out, like, is it hard to breathe in the room? Or it looks like this is maybe just a device that is, like, powering, like, maybe some flame breath or something like that. You're not going to have to, like, roll to see if you can, like, not pass out or anything like that because it's a brief enough span of time. Like, basically, you just tell this is the dragon's lungs and he's breathing. And when it breathes outward, this room is basically devoid of oxygen for, you know, three or four seconds until it breathes back in again. Okay. Can I roll insight to try and see if anybody can help me remember which Limp Bizkit song starts with breathe in, breathe out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay, that's a three plus uh, three is six. 
Anyone? Oh, I rolled a three. I do not remember. <laughs> yeah, it turns out you'll never know. Sorry. Okay, great. Thank you. We should probably grab that sword because if we don't possess it, one of these two knuckleheads will, and we're going to have to fight against it. So I'd, I'd feel more comfortable if one of us had that in our possession. All right. Now, I'm uh, just so everyone knows, I don't want to go grab that sword because uh, Granny Zuko doesn't like dealing with weapons. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're wearing a leather jacket. You look like a street tough. It says T-Birds on the back. You don't deal with weapons? And no. The most I ever do is I get on all fours behind someone and have uh, one of my friends <laughs> push them over, and then uh, they just fall over me. It's called picnic tabling someone. Friend, I'm so sorry to say, you think your jacket says T-Birds? Lady, the bee fell off years ago. It says turds. Hey, well, the, the bee always falls off once we get up there in age. Uh, and one day the bee will fall off you as well. This might be the popcorn talking, but I think I have a plan. Yeah, let's hear it, Lime. Yeah, please. Um, so I have a gust spell. So I can buy us, I think, maybe more time and I can, when the fire starts on the sword, I can make the fire go out again so we have more time to grab the sword. Ooh, cool. okay. I like the sound of that. June, July, August, September. And we can edit things out of the podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is, so this is a little little weird audio puzzle. So in order to grab the sword when it's not on fire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have a stopwatch on my end, and I'm going to count to three. I'm going to go one, two, three on one second per count exactly, and then I'm going to stop counting. And when you think exactly 12 seconds have elapsed, one of you is going to say now, and that'll be your character reaching out to try to grab it. Now, because you did the gust spell, you have a full second on either side of 12 seconds. So if you get it 11 or 13, it'll still count and you'll grab it. Sort of like red light, green light. Yeah. When we say now is when you'll clock us. Exactly. Okay, cool. All right, who wants to grab it? Well, uh, do, do we all get a chance or did, it, did, can only one of us say now? You can do it as many times as you want to. It's just if you fail, you have to do a dexterity check to see if you get burned or not. Now, when we say now, can we do Billy Madison rules? So if we say now, that's what I call music <laughs> volume 20. That doesn't count as our turn. And then we could say now, like in the future as well. If you do a now, that's what I call music 20. And then you can correctly guess one song that was on that very specific volume. Now, that's what I call music. You'll just automatically get it. That's, that's a trick question because they put Smash Mouth's All Star in every volume. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I call music. <laughs> okay. Since I have the inspiration, uh, why don't I give it the first shot? Please, yes. Dr. Peter rubs his feathers together, his wings, to try and um, get all the moisture off and kind of get ready and prepped. Uh, uh, whenever you're ready. One, two, three. Did anyone else have lunch or forget to have lunch? Because I know that there was a cart that they now. were pushing. What's happening? Okay, so that was 10.89 seconds. You were so close. Huh, you were, so you were, close. Oh. But somehow I didn't get it. Somehow <laughs> I fucked up. Hmm. Granny, do you want some popcorn that's been uh, individually buttered? Oh, thank you. You're such a dear. What a sweetie. Give me a dexterity saving throw. That'll be a 16 plus 5 adjusted, uh, obviously, a, a 21. Oh, great. Okay, so you only take a d4 of burn damage as you leap away then. Granny, I just think it's so cute that you haven't let go of that little bunny's hand yet. You two are so cute together. Oh, I didn't even notice it. I might never let go. Grandma, if you're going to do it, let me put my hand in there. I don't want you to hurt your hand. Uh, well, uh, okay, buddy. I, I think... Thank you so much. Thupper's going to go for me. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. 526,600 <laughs> minutes. How do you solve a puzzle on a ship now. with dragon? Ooh. You got at 12 seconds, 0.03. Ooh. So you got it. You, you successfully managed to grab the sword without it being on fire and took away agency from our three guests. You did such a good, good job, Matthew. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to do it. Good job there, Thumper. I had. <laughs> am I good now? You said I was evil, but am I good now? Well, I could use detect evil and good, but do I really want to blow another fucking level one spell on a? <laughs> Wait, well, why not? I'll cast detect evil and good uh, one more time and see if uh, if Thumper has changed at all. I feel like you get to decide if you've changed or not, Matt. I don't know if somebody being nice to you suddenly makes you a good person. Uh, and then you tell me I was depending on the answer. I was going to try to stab Grandma Zuka. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you're definitely still evil. Yeah. like you're you're just an evil person who got shown a small amount of kindness, yeah. but you're still inherently selfish and sadistic. Yeah. Okay. The only difference is I'll probably feel a little bad about this one, <laughs> and then I try to stab. 
stab Grandma Zuka. Okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. That's not going to be in the children's book. <laughs> Don't edit my book while I'm writing it. <laughs> if I want notes, I'll ask for notes. That- <laughs> also, I just want to specify, Granny Zuka was safe because he's trying to stab uh, Grandma Zuka. <laughs> <laughs> who's I, who's uh, she, who, who, who I assume is a Greek woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's just hanging out there, immediately gets stabbed and murdered. Anti Spanakopita. <laughs> I've got baklava. I got 19, unfortunately. Oh, wow, 19. Okay, so, JBC, you're going to take 2d8 plus 2 damage. Real quick, because my AC Slater. is 19. Oh, it is? Oh, damn. Can I use my reaction to cast shield? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to just intersperse a big shield in front of me to block that sword. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so this flaming sword comes down, and with seemingly no expression on her face, whatever, Granny Zuko waves her hand, and the sword suddenly clangs against a, essentially a force field that has surrounded her body. You've done no damage to her. Oh, uh, whoopsie, Thumper. Looks like you, uh, uh, you better, you, a little too careful with that. Why don't you let old Granny Zuko uh, hold <laughs> on to that sword for now? Uh, no. Shame on you, you bad little bunny. <laughs> hold it tight. Now, now, Thumper. Oh. Should a little bunny be holding a sword? Damn. Okay, here. I give the sword back. Defeated. All right. Uh, Granny Zuko walks to the nearest window, uh, pops it open, <laughs> and tosses the sword out of the place. <laughs> All right, now no, no, no more, no God, more bad. Just fly and get it, fly and get it. No more bad weapons on the on board the ship. We don't need any violence. I'll fly and grab the sword if you call me by my full name. <laughs> and I will get it. And I'm not looking it up. And I will get it. That sword is gone. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Doctor um, Peter Feathersby. No, don't don't mess me up, <laughs> Doctor Peter. Um, wings. My name wings is Hawk stop. Hudson, and wings I said it a hundred times. <laughs> wings wings fan. Stop. Dr. Dr. Peter, 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 Peter Wingstop Dr. was my father, Peter please. Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> that sword is long gone. It fell uh-huh. into an orphanage and set it on fire. It oh, is, well, at least it, it went to something good. <laughs> at least right, it went we to did good by accident. The orphanage. <laughs> Plague is going to take the opportunity to see the lungs and go into the lungs. Okay. Does anyone want to stop him? How? I'm I'm a formless mass. I'm taking over this dragon. Um, I'm going to. Ooh, okay. Try. Turn him into a liquid or a solid. How will you try to stop him? Gust. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> I guess without yeah, mass, so, I, there's not much I can do about that. Yeah, you can't even really roll for that. So she's just like, <laughs> out of the, the path of the, the lung. Don't say mass around the cleric, please. As I dissipate, I go, <laughs> I believe the common denominator of the universe is not harmony, but chaos, hostility, and murder. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she can do that infinitely if she wants. Like, it's not going to completely dissipate and destroy you, but like, she can basically buffet you around as much as she wants forever. I'm going to make him dance. <laughs> <laughs> so you are rapping. <laughs> so I want to watch the plague do the entire single ladies dance in real time. <laughs> it's just full on that whap dance, just like on the floor of the dragon. <laughs> just like very seductively, like the splits yes. happen and I turn around. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, oh, didn't think that was possible. Past the lungs, Anthony, there is another door in here, correct? Yes, there's a another door. You can smell some like halitosis on the other end. Is the door locked? It is, but you've got the keys to everything, oh, okay. so you can open it. All right, everyone. Uh, now s- stop blowing around and stop uh, thumping about. Let's uh, move on now, everyone. Use your buddy. Everyone, find your buddy. You're holding the bunny. Oh yes, the buddy's my buddy. <laughs> Hi, Wingspan. Do you want to be my my buddy? I would love. Nothing more. And it looks like Plague is infecting a couple of his buddies, Jeremy and Jeremy, the twins, as I affectionately call them. We love Plague. They're around also, I guess, if you want to use them. Okay, so the next room you can see is just, I don't have to be coy about it anymore. It's the mouth. You're in the mouth. There is a hole in the roof of the mouth uh, with a ladder leading upward, and you can feel air coming from up there. There's a bunch of teeth lining the rows of the mouth. Inside, because I assumed that things would go differently, and that one of you would not be a bird. There were only two parachutes, if one could imagine a sort of moral quandary where there were three of you and only two of you could have parachutes. And then there's a bed kit there if you had been infected by a virus, which you had not. And there's a big guard there, a dragonborn guard, who's standing there uh, clad in plate mail. And he goes, uh, what y'all doing here? Oh, uh, well, uh, my name's Granny Zuko. Uh, we're all uh, convicts, prisoners on this uh, uh, dragon, and we're all looking to escape. Oh! 
I meant to kill you then. Oh, bother. Oh, what's your job on the dragon? I'm the pilot, so to speak. It's more of a symbolic job because the dragon flies itself. But uh-huh. I make sure that nobody messes with the inner workings of the dragon. And just then, um, Lime LaCroix is using, is it called the uvula? The thing in the back of your throat? Yes. Uh, she's uh, doing like a little like boxing. <laughs> 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 You can feel the like tunnel behind you going like, oh, oh, and it like compresses a little bit. I'm going to be so strong. Can I try to sneak away? Yeah, give me a stealth roll. That's an 18. Wow. Okay. So yeah, you managed to gingerly remove your hand from Granny Zuko's hand. And where are you now? I grab a parachute and I turn to them. I go, I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> and I just leap out of the dragon. <gasps> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> You're welcome, Anthony. Goodbye. Now there's only one parachute left, which is one too few for this group. I'm going to commit more murders, and it's going to be on you guys for not solving Anthony's puzzle to kill me. Goodbye. <laughs> I miss the bunny. Bunny! <laughs> Dr. Peter Wingspan is going to put his wings in the air, almost like he's being held up or something, and slowly back to wherever that hole was with the ladder going upwards, uh-huh. get right underneath that, and say to the pilot, well, friend, you got us. We're not going to give you any trouble. And then he uh, looks at Lime LaCroix and says, gust me, gust me. Uh, gust. <laughs> and my attempt is to get a huge gust of wind uh, hitting my wings so I fly upward at such a rapid pace that I can't be stopped. Ooh. Oh, that's very cool. Roll uh, acrobatics with advantage because that's cool. Uh, natural 20. Wow. Woo! So with the natural 20, you get to describe exactly what happens and it's all canon. Uh, Lime LaCroix hits me with that gust. And as the wind hits Dr. Peter Wingspan, the white on top of his head is hardly noticeable. It almost looks the full reddish brown that it did in his youth, almost even redder and browner and more beautiful and lush. And um, he can't really smile because he has a beak. But if he could, you see the faint upward curl of a smile. And he puts his wings down at his side and shoots upward almost as if he's a a bank tube and a pneumatic tube (laughs) being whooshed upwards. And as he flies upwards, he screams at the top of his lungs his name, Dr. (laughs) Peter Wingspan, and enunciates just like that. For the record, here's what I heard. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Stanley, too close to the gust. (laughs) And also as he goes up, he makes eye contact with the pilot and gestures towards his flight risk tattoo. Ah, yes. Very good. Very good. (laughs) I warned you, motherfucker. (laughs) And the pilot goes, you too? And he reveals his collarbone and he has another (laughs) flight risk tattoo as well. What is going on? The artist told me that was an original. You managed to shoot your way up and basically you are on, so we'll sort of cut back and forth between you two. You exit on top of the dragon. You are right next to the biggest goddamn eye you have ever seen. And you can see another one across the way. You hear a voice, the same voice that was booming at you at the very beginning of the adventure. Be like, yo, what the fuck? And then down beneath inside the mouth, that dragonborn's like, oh, criminy, I've my one fucking job. No. And then he starts to try to climb up after Adel. I sort of bend down next to his sort of lizard ears and try and communicate with him. Okay. Fringe. I just want to let you know that I'm on your side. I'm also a flightful creature. I don't know if that's a proper term. Uh, I'm not flightless. I I can fly. I should have just said that. Don't have much time. Uh, My name is Dr. (laughs) Peter Wingspan. Can you say that back to me just so I can uh, confirm that you heard me and I'm not crazy? Dr. Peter Wingman. No, close enough. (laughs) Friend, there's some uh, people inside of you or creatures inside of you that mean you harm. Do you mind taking us down or uh, do you know how to land this thing? Myself? Do I know how to land myself? Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty good at landing myself. Yeah. Go, go, go. I could tell I pissed you off. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, <laughs> just trying to save your life. That's all I'm doing. Uh, did you know there's a flaming sword inside? There's not time for this. Uh, buddy, you need to <laughs> take it down, okay? Take us down, land, open your mouth, and we're going to get the trouble out of you. I'm not uh, I'm not authorized to land for anything other than the Supermax person. Why would I do that? I'm not going to do that. Oh, shit. You work for them. I'm sorry. Um, bro. Well, yeah, I'm mean, like, they made me do, like, I'm not psyched about it, but it's my job, and they'll, they'll hunt me down to kill me. Huh. Would you have other skill sets? Uh, I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Peter uh, Wingman starts to tear up. I can sing. Yeah, you want to do a duet? Yes, I would love nothing more. Right, you, you pick the song. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this is going to go. I can show you the world. Shining. And as he begins to say shining, everybody inside the mouth, the entire like structure begins to like vibrate and the guy falls off of the ladder and stuff. And everybody give me actually dexterity saving throws inside the mouth. Oh God, a two. Six. So both of you, a gust of air as he uses his diaphragm pushes you out the front of his mouth, and you barely manage to grab on to one of the teeth at the uh, the edge of his mouth, dangling in the oh, air. Oh, no! 
Dr. Peter Wingspan, come and save us. Break your legs and Granny will heal you later. Break my legs? What? Are you, what? Break your leg. Like, we'll hold on to your legs while you fly and they'll break because of your bones. Yeah, it's not a matter of my legs breaking. I can't carry that much weight. We don't weigh that much. Oh, well, I... I weigh quite a bit. <laughs> I'm wearing, like, uh, heavy armor, so that's like 60 pounds right there. I'm not willing to take it off. Granny, I'm trying to convince him to carry us down there. This was a present from my nephew. Wait, there's one more parachute. Yes. I'll use but it's that. it's back near the end of the mouth. You'd have to uh, crawl your way back up while this vibration stuff is happening. All right, let's see. What can I do? Hey, dragon friend, uh, since you're musical, do you happen to know the Limp Biscuit song that starts with breathe in, breathe out? <laughs> Or even if it's Limp Bizkit, it might not be. Uh, there's a Matt Kearney song called Breathe In, Breathe Out. Yeah, Matt Kearney, I don't know. Can I try to uh, crawl to the back of the mouth? Give me a uh, dexterity roll. A uh, nine. You sort of begin to climb, but you very quickly find that the tongue is too slick, and you begin to slide back toward the teeth, and now your feet are, like, pressed up against the teeth, uh, and your arms aren't even connected to anything. You're just barely getting hmm. buffeted up against the uh, the teeth by the wind. I wonder if I can make the dragon cough if the um, oh. parachute will come forward. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you were punching the shit out of its uvula. <laughs> I know. I have um, gust again or firebolt. I'm trying to think of poison spray. Firebolt or poison spray would definitely do it. Firebolt. Okay, do you have to roll anything for that? That is a plus six to your roll, Aaron. 17. You aim your firebolt perfectly, and it sails toward the purple bruised uvula that you've already been beating on for the last 20 minutes, hits it, and incinerates the uvula. He goes, shiny (laughs) chimneys. The uh, parachute (laughs) detaches from the corner of his mouth and sails towards you. Give me a sleight of hand roll or a dexterity roll to try to grab it out of the air. Uh, 15. So with a 15, you grab it, and you have the only parachute on the dragon in your hand now. Oh, sweet. Um... Well, Granny, it's been so good. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed your company. Can I can I be honest with you? Uh huh. I was never going to leave this dragon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. so dark. <laughs> it's like Shawshank Redemption. I'm only seventy four. I have a long life left ahead of me, but. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. And I did engage in illegal street racing with the T-Birds back in my younger days, so I will be serving out the rest of my sins. I just wanted to see a good, clean kid like you and Dr. Feathers McGee, or whatever his name might be, not have to rot away in here if you don't want to. Now, I'm going to help a lot of people. I think that I can reform any bunny or smoke monster that I uh, come across and uh, and really do a lot of good in this person. And Lime LaCroix... Uh takes a deep breath and sighs and then hands Granny uh, her wow. parachute. <laughs> granny throws the parachute out of the mouth of the dragon. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I was interpreting. <laughs> I thought you wanted to stay. I thought you wanted to stay with me and help the people. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, co- I couldn't have been more wrong about Every that. Every part of me is mad at you. Lime is mad. So, Aaron's I mad. So Every character I've ever played is mad. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> So good. So the dragon sees a parachute fly out of his mouth. Oh, what what was that? And I answer him, oh, shoot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, friend, I guess if you don't want to land because it's your job, then I'm afraid this is where we part ways. Well, go ahead and roll persuasion. Uh, Adjusted 20, 17 plus 3. Oh, yeah, I guess you're wearing the convict uniforms and stuff. You probably shouldn't be here if everything was going well. So I guess the convicts are loose, huh? That sucks. Shit. Shit. Of course, I'm a guard. I put on their clothing to blend in because I'm a character actor. Uh, so uh, you and I are friends. We're both working the job. Well, what are you going to do about the, these other two then? Because I can feel, I feel uh, uh, yeah, I feel there are definitely two convicts holding on my teeth right now. What do we do about that? Can you mouth feel their uh, physique or the possibly- Because says we're just getting covered in tongue. <laughs> tongue exactly, over. yeah. So both of you give me a uh, strength check. It's getting oh, tongued real good. Uh, 18. 12. LaCroix, you're going to take a D6 of damage as this massive, meaty, putrescent tongue just slaps down on you and just bludgeons you. Uh, Granny, you uh, manage to resist the incoming hunk of meat that's coming at you. Up top, the dragon goes like, feels like a street racer and somebody with very little self-control. Okay. (laughs) Tell you what, I have a riddle for you. You get it right, and I'll let your friends go. You ready? Yes. I help a needle do its job. When a hurricane rages, I do not. And I'm about to tell you the answer. What am I? Oh, this man is brain damaged. That's not a riddle. That's just gibberish. (laughs) (laughs) 
this poor dragon. You're confused. You can also ask your friends down there. Hey, uh, uh, Lime LaCroix, uh, uh, Granny Zuko, did you happen to hear that? Aye. Aye. Oh, the, the eye of a hurricane, the eye of a needle. Aye, aye, Captain. Damn, you got it. I was just doing a pirate affirmative. <laughs> but yes, that also makes sense for the riddle, too. And I was just itching my eyes. <laughs> yeah, no, you, get, you got it. And as I say the answer, I, I slam one of my talons into the dragon's eye. <laughs> 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 get fucked. That's awesome. <laughs> it's so big, there's literally no way you can miss. So go ahead and just roll, like, double damage for whatever your talent attacks are. Five and a two, so that's seven. Each roll minus one, so five all day. You make a relatively small puncture wound in the dragon's eye, but- uh, only- Anthony, be honest with me. Did I kill it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, incidentally, uh, you make this very small puncture, but then you see that you've not just punctured its eye, you've punctured the protective light membrane that keeps like wind from getting into its eye. And now wind is just hitting it directly in its exposed eye. And it's like really fucking irritating it. And you can see the like veins are getting red and dried out and stuff. And he goes like, oh no, why did I make the answer to my riddle? My one weakness. He like closes one eye and then like tries to remaneuver himself. Loses all depth perception. Oh yeah. (laughs) And he hits the corner of this canyon wall and begins to uh, start crashing. One of his wings gets clipped and he is careening down toward the earth. He's rolling fast enough that the centrifugal force is keeping you inside of his mouth. Even while he's like doing barrel rolls and stuff as he goes down, he plows right into the ground and everybody takes 2d12 of, of damage. Ooh, and Lime LaCroix is just throwing up everywhere. She has really bad motion sickness. <laughs> the doctor would have put his wings parallel to the ground so that the wind caught him and stabilized him so clearly he would not hit the ground. Yeah, you take no damage. Four. Oh my god. I rolled 18, so Whoa. massive damage for me. Nobody's dead? Nobody's dead. You hear a pretty rowdy snap as his neck hits the ground, <gasps> and his head suddenly does this weird, like, 90 degree split upward. Holy shit, so I did kill him. <laughs> you paralyzed him. He's, he can still talk. I just meant to scratch his cornea. <laughs> oh, fuck. Shit, you guys. You guys are the worst. When my boss is coming to pick me up, I'm going to tell him to find you three assholes. Do you have a cool gang name or something that I can refer to you as and other... It- podcast if we want to reference you. Dr. Peter Wingspan gets like kind of a sly look on his face and he goes, just tell him to look for the folks with a flight risk tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that that means millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a flight risk tattoo. Uh, my tattoo just says, hey, riddle, riddle. It also says patreon.com slash hey, riddle, riddle. I don't know. <laughs> you can join the Clue Crew for $5 a month and the Review Crew for $8 a month and uh, support the show. It's also free episodes every Wednesday. We're on the HeadGum Network. It's a lot of ink. <laughs> my name's Granny Zuko. I'm an old woman. Also a Grease reference. This special episode of Dungeons and Daddies features Anthony Birch as your DM, JPC as Granny Zuko, Adel Rafai as Dr. Peter Wingspan, Aaron Keefe as Lime LaCroix, Matt Arnold as Thumper, and me, Freddie Wong, as Werner Herzog as Plague. We are supported by an excellent and loving Patreon. You can find out more at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. But we got guests here. Plugs, where can people find you? Our podcast is called Hey Riddle Riddle. You can get it anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, We're on the HeadGum Network as well. Uh, If you like our show and you want to support our show, we're we're also on Patreon. We do weekly bonus episodes on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash hey riddle riddle. This is also not the only collaboration we're doing. Will, Beth, and myself will be joining Adel, JPC, and Aaron on their podcast, Hey Riddle Riddle, to see how good we are at solving riddles and doing improv. That episode should be out about the same time you hear this one. Hey, this is Adorify. You can find me on social media at Adorify, spelled how it sounds. I, I guess look it up. I'm so sorry. And I do another podcast you can check out, please, called Hello from the Magic Tavern. It's a improvised fantasy podcast on the Earwolf Network, so check that out, please. Uh, you can follow me, Aaron Keefe 10 on Instagram and Aaron Keefe 2 on Twitter. Uh, also, if you write riddles or you know any uh, riddles that you love, um, you can email us at hrrpodcast at gmail.com and we will use your riddle because we are running out. Please, God, please email us, please. <laughs> uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at JPSoFly or on uh, Instagram and Twitch at Shark Parkman. Thank you guys so much for having us on. This is a blast. Thanks so Thank much for so being much. on. Thank you. It's truly and, a pleasure. And uh, we'll see everybody later. There was a time when you could read between the lines. You know they never brought you down. Never brought you down. No!
nothing's less cool than admitting you like a thing in general, much less to the people <laughs> who made that thing. So I considered like, should I be like mean to him at the top and like neg him to make it seem like I'm a normal person? But I didn't have the balls to do that. So here we are. Uh, dude, this is literally me every time I go to a Taco Bell drive through It's like, <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say Baja Blast changed my life. Huge fan of the product. Uh, <laughs> sorry if I was mean to you. It's just because I'm nervous. <laughs> and I will say Taco Bell's Patreon has some pretty great content. 